Bonsoir. Bonsoir. Guten Abend. Dobre večer. And for my fellow Brits and anyone else, good evening. This is the 2024 E-Robotics Awards Ceremony. Where we have a lot to present to you this evening. We have a, a lot of um, people to recognize, award, um, projects to, to, to acclaim, work to, um, to, uh, to, to recognize as well. So but without further ado, I'm going to move straight on. And this is what we will cover this evening. So. We will start with the PhD award, the Tech Transfer Award, and then the Entrepreneurship Award. Um, and we will be introducing to you um, what would very possibly become a new award for sustainability. Um, we will give you a preview of next year's ERF and reveal um, where ERF 2026 will be and then there'll be a grand finale when everyone will come on stage for a photograph. And of course, um, one of the highlights of this evening is that you know, we wish to show our appreciation for uh, Renaud Champion. So we'll move on though to the first of the awards this evening, which is the Georges Giral PhD Award. And I'd like to invite uh, Gianluca Antonelli to come to the stage. So good afternoon, everybody. Buonasera. And Gianluca Antonelli, it's my pleasure to present the Georges Giral PhD Award. Now, this is the 23rd edition of uh, this award. And the PhD considers uh, all the theses defended during the solar year 2023 in uh, European universities. The jury, I will uh, show you the jury later on, is composed by 27, I think, European academics. And uh, finally, we we'll receive a plaque. The winner will receive a, a, a plaque and the, the possibility to publish the thesis with Springer and the Understar series. Uh, I will read all the names of uh, the uh, members of the jury because they deserve it, because they made a tremendous work to evaluate several candidatures, I will show you a little bit of statistics later, in a so short amount of time. So we have Pedro, George, Pedro Aguiar, George Batista, Fabio Bonsignorio, who is here, Gerd Guber, Angel del Pobil, Dimos Di Marogonas, Zoe Dulgeri, uh, she left, Bob Fischer, Fanny Ficocello, Samia Dadin, Marina Indri, Lorenzo Iamone, Jens Kober, Zenko Kovacic, Alexis Costas, Costas Kirikopoulos, Simon Lacroix, Michel Mistri, Anna Cristina Murillo, Daniele Nardi, Max Pinstor is also here, Paolo Rubuffo Giordano, you are owning also here, Alessandro Saffiotti, Pedro Sanz, Hans Palanzani, and Olger Ross. I would like to thank them again because, as I said, it's a lot of work in a short amount of time. The committee uh, is more or less balanced under a lot of uh, constraints, uh, the keywords, uh, the community they come from, the ge geographical balance. We try also the gender, but we need to improve on that, on that uh, perspective. Now, how did they work? We receive uh, the submissions uh, beginning of uh, um, uh, December, and then uh, each thesis uh, is assigned to five different reviews and scored with the score from well, zero, zero to five, not one to five. And based on uh, you know, the histogram, we decide uh, which one pass to the second stage. In the second stage, there is an all-to-all -all readings of the thesis. And uh, the uh, members of the jury just uh, list the names of the three candidates that they would like to hear at the final. And the final is an oral presentation, uh, typically in presence. Uh, this year we made a blended presentation, which was, I think, uh, okay. It was um, uh, po positive. And then uh, we meet, uh, a subset uh, of the jury meet just after the discussion, and we select the winner. We received 54 submissions this year from 12 different countries. Uh, this year we had more or less a, a polarization from Italy and Germany. Every year diff is different. Uh, we try to, to cover with, uh, I mean, with the information, to spread the information uh, as much as possible, but always 
in every, every year there is a polarization toward one country uh, rather than another. I think this is normal, I mean, statistics. I would like to ask uh, uh, the finalists to come uh, on stage, and those are uh, Manuel Kepler from uh, TU Munich, uh, Oyer Mez from Freiburg. Uh, he was uh, um, uh, remotely connected yesterday because uh, he's uh, in Stanford, so will not be here on the stage. Uh, Manuel, please. Alessandro Paleschi from University of Pisa. Uh, Ellen Royals, uh, she was uh, here yesterday, and for personal re uh, reasons, uh, she had to left uh, earlier, so she will not be here, but she asked uh, the colleagues to come to uh, her place. I don't know if uh, uh, someone plays of Ellen, she told me. Okay, that's, that's fine. And then uh, Julian Urain from TU Darmstadt. Uh, may I ask you a round of applause for the finalist? I mean, being here is already an achievement, uh, and uh, unfortunately, there will be only one winner, unfortunately, for, for, uh, for the finalist. And this year, the, the winner is uh, Manuel Kaplan from TU Munich. Jan Walker and um, congratulations to the finalists and the winner. So we move on to the Technology Transfer Award and uh, I'd like to invite the chair of this award, uh, Werner Kraus, to the stage. All right, good evening uh, together. Well, as every year I have the honor to now also uh, dig into the Tech Transfer Award. I mean, a successful PhD is very important for our position in Europe, and then the next step is to transfer these results then also into a new robotic solution. And that's exactly the point which is the Tech Transfer Award is about. And uh, this year we received uh, nine proposals where we have uh, derived four finalists, and the key criteria are that out of uh, research, um, uh, innovative robotics product application uh, was generated. There was really IP, which was originated from research like Host in Europe uh, project, and later on applied by industry, and the commercialization has started. It's, uh, as every year, the pleasure to work together with the long-term jury, uh, with Fariba Katami from VDMA, um, Rainer Bischoff with Intrinsic, Hermann Brünning, Keo Löwen, uh, Nicola Tomatis from Blue Botics, um, and Georg von Wichert from Siemens. We had uh, this year, interestingly, applications more in, from the industrial side in the last years. When you remember, we had uh, solutions uh, in the final about service robots for medical uh, application. And I want to shortly introduce the four finalists uh, to you. The first finalist is Kobo Manipulator from CEA together with uh, KUKA and Airbus. Um, so here we are about an innovative uh, manipulator which can carry more than 100 kilogram. It is hand guided, has uh, virtual fences, a digital twin. There are more than 10 patents uh, around and it's uh, applied in the, um, uh, at Airbus in the aeronautic industries. The second finalist uh, is in the construction area, a uh, robot for masonry. So the, this robot can help building houses. Um, so it can take the brick and lay the brick. And this is a, a project from CTU from Prague together with Wienerberger, the manufacturer of the bricks, and K&M Robotics. The third finalist uh, this year is the magnet crawler. So uh, this is a small robot uh, which can move along uh, surfaces, for example, in ships or in wind, uh, windmills for inspection purposes. So it has magnets in its wheel and it allows to also, for example, in off-sea um, situations where you can apply no drones, uh, robustly navigate and making 
inspection processes where so far you need industrial line bus. Last but not least, um, another mobile robot application is uh, the load runner. Um, with from Kion Group together with Frauen for IML. So this is a highly agile and flexible robot for uh, sortation. It makes uh, five meter per square meter acceleration, 10 meter per second, and has also some kind of new navigation capabilities inside. So that's our, our final list. We had the presentations uh, yesterday, and now I would like to ask the final list and also the jury to come on stage. <laughs> then uh, I'm coming to the third place. Uh, so we had a really hard discussion uh, within uh, the jury. And the third place of this year's award uh, goes to the Kubo Manipulator from CUA and uh, KUKA and Airbus. Yep, applause. Uh, the second place goes to the construction robot um, for the masonry robot. Congratulations to the second place. Well, then the winner uh, this year is the load runner of Kion and IML. Congratulations. Uh. Well, the magnet crawler goes uh, or remains as a finalist this year. Also, congratulations for DFKI. Yeah. So, potentially now, time for a group picture. Let's move on to the next, which is the Entrepreneurship Award. And um, we'll begin with an appreciation of Renaud Champion, and I'd like to invite um, Jon Aguirre Ibarbia to come to the stage. 12 years ago, in Odense, we organized the first uh, U-Robotics Entrepreneurship Award. That year, in 2012, U-Robotics and a French venture capitalist started to collaborate. He was the founder of Primnext, specialized in sourcing, and valuation of robotics companies. And he was also the co-founder and partner of the first venture capital fund fully dedicated to robotics. And also co-founder uh, co of uh, uh, Revolution Capital. He also joined U Robotics. He became one of the industry directors and he was one of the jury members for the Entrepreneurship Award that year in Odense in 2012. You know already we are talking about uh, Renault, Renault Champion. Since then, during many years, Renault continued to support the award as coach and as jury member, and also the U Robotics Association as one of the directors in the board. His activities, on the business side of robotics innovation were a revolution in our scientific and technically focused community. Renault was a straightforward, approachable guy with enthusiasm for robotics. Unfortunately, you know, Renault passed away last year. We miss him dearly. But for us, he will always be our colleague, highly knowledgeable, experienced, and successful person, 
who remained humble, friendly, and accessible all along his brilliant career. This is why today we, the EU Robotics Association, and the whole European robotics community would like to recognize his work. So we decided to dedicate our hour to Renault. From this year on, we will have the Renault Champion Entrepreneurship Award. This is an important moment for us that we wanted to share with Renault family. So we invited them to Rimini, and they are here with us. We are very happy to receive today Audrey, Renault wives, and their children, Jules, Zoe, and Eve. <laughs> Could you come with us to the stage? Could you come? The winners. So we wanted to give you one for, okay, in the memory of Renault. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. We move on now to um, um, what we are now very pleased and honored to call the Renault Champion Entrepreneurship Award this year's version. So um, I would like to invite um, uh, Michael Christofferson, who is the awards chair, to um, come to make the presentation. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Stephen. So the Renault Champion Entrepreneurship Award is given for now every year, each year at the European Robotics Forum to the most promising robotic startup in Europe, and it will be judged by a jury of robotic entrepreneurship experts who are also pioneers in the business. So in this year's selection of uh, the winners and uh, in the award track, uh, we had a jury this year who was uh, Istvan Tuai from Universal Robots. It was Dr. Michael Super. It was Dr. Radhika Kudipati. It was Dr. Ricardo Fini and Giovanni Sabatore. And Giovanni Sabatore was at the same time our role model presentation in, in the track. So this year we received 17 applications, which and 13 of those were eligible to pitch online in front of an online jury. And for us, it was a great pleasure to see the quality of all the presentations, to listen to them, and to be able to ask them questions. The applicants this year was of a very high quality, and they were all giving very strong pitches. So it was really not easy to make a decision and to select the five finalists. So the five finalists that got the opportunity to pitch at the workshop this morning, it was Haibia from Denmark, Isochronic from Switzerland, Smart Farm Robotics from Bulgaria, Kinetic Space from Germany, and Seal Robotics from Belgium. So in a moment, I'll play a video um, presenting all the finalists uh, this year. And at the same time, I'll ask uh, the startups and the sponsors handing out the prizes to come at the stage uh, while we show the video.
Cool. Thank you for your patience. And uh, we promise not to show the video one more time. So, <laughs> as we move along. So, firstly, um, it was a very tough decision for the jury to uh, to find the prizes uh, this morning, uh, and we're handing out a first, a second, and a third prize. Uh, that also means that we have two finalists who do not get a prize, but do get the honor of uh, making it to the final. And to handing out the certificates to the first two finalists, we have uh, Jon Aguilera from uh, Technalia. Cool. And now we will announce the two finalists, which is uh, Hybia and Seal Robotics. So please come forward. <laughs> so the next prize we're handing out is the third place. And to hand out the prize for the third place, we have Status around Status from Newswear. And this time, I believe they're both getting a certificate and a trophy. So, and we're proud to announce that the winner of the third prize in the Renault Champion Entrepreneurship Award 2024 is Kinetic Space. So please come forward. Cool, and uh, then we hand out the prize for the second place. And to hand out the certificate and the trophy, we have Ernst Foller from Odense Robotics. So he's giving out the prize, so, but it was okay. So the second place of the Renault Champagne Enterprise Shield Award 2024 goes to Smart Farm Robotics from Bulgaria. And finally, but of course at least, uh, we are handing out the prize to the first place, and it will be Eastman 2i from Universal Robots handing out the certificate and the trophy. And now you probably already guessed it, but the winner of the first prize is Isochronic AG from Switzerland. Cool, thank you so much. So. A big help us to say a big thank you to our sponsors who have made this possible. So we, because of the sponsors, we can bring the startups here to be here physically, to be, and we can also give them a good, very good price uh, for uh, for first, second, and third place. So the sponsors this year is, uh, of course, working in collaboration with EU Robotics. Then it's Odense Robotics, it's Universal Robots, it's Blue Robotics, and it's Nose Cloudware. So please give a big hand of applause for the sponsors for this prize. Uh, well done to what I think we can call the inaugural winners of our um, uh, newly styled Renault Champion Entrepreneurship Award. So we now move on to um, a new feature for the EU Robotics Award uh, ceremony, and that's um, so a s recognition for um, sustainability leadership in robotics and it gives me pleasure to invite uh, Franziska uh, Kirstein to the stage. Okay, super. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, super. Um, yeah, we thought it is about time uh, to have a recognition um, to acknowledge all the good efforts that are happening within sustainability and uh, robotics. And uh, that's why we opened up a call uh, this year for submissions for an ERF session where we could uh, recognize and celebrate the innovations in robotics that contribute significantly to environmental, social and economical sustainability. We opened up the call and uh, we received uh, six applicants for, for three different categories. So the first one was supporting sustainability uh, in robotics through an initiative. The second, making use of an existing robot solution to support sustainability. And the third, developing robots to support sustainability. 
And we also had a jury. Uh, the jury had uh, various backgrounds, social sustainability, environmental assessment, also the technical aspects. Uh, what they had in common was that they all uh, worked and pushed for sustainability and robotics in the past years. Um, in one way or the other. Uh, some are also working at sustainability uh, consultancies uh, with background in robotics. And uh, the jury was not to decide on a single winner like we've seen with the awards. It's a, a recognition. And um, we wanted to give the, all the applicants a really good feedback on how they can uh, develop their projects and uh, maybe get funding or get more education on the topic that, uh, that they are working on. And that's why we've assembled, assembled uh, uh, the jury of experts and the, the applicants will get an evaluation, quite detailed evaluation report after the ERF that will hopefully help them on their journey. And uh, next, I'll also show a little video. Super. Always watch it first. So I hope you got a, a bit of a, an impression of what's going on and all the good efforts that, uh, that, that our community is doing um, in robotics to support sustainability. And uh, for sure, that's not the only activities that are going on. So uh, if you have a project in mind that could, uh, that, that could also get a little bit more attention uh, where you would, that we would like to share, 
uh, apply for the session next year. We hope it's going to be an established part of the ERF from now on. Um, but now I would like to, uh, to invite all the applicants and uh, the co-organizer, Sharad Akaladevi, on stage to receive your certificates. And yes, give a bit of applause. Um, congratulations to uh, all of the recipients of the Sustainability Leadership in Robotics uh, recognition because its uh, status as an award uh, maybe will be consolidated over time. Okay, so we move on then to um, one of our last uh, parts of the ceremony, which is a preview of where I'm sure the great majority of you will be at ERF in 2025. So once again, please welcome to the stage um, Werner Kraus. Yes. Thank you, Steve. And also brought together uh, part of the team for the next ERF. Yes, also we are really honored and uh, thrilled to welcome you in Stuttgart next year. Uh, our motto is boosting the synergies between AI and robotics for a stronger Europe. Part of the team is already here. Part of other part of the team is in Stuttgart. It's of course, as every year, a team effort. We will get lots of input also from Morten from last year, Marienza and all the Italy team uh, from this year. And the chair is um, the Rebecca Reich from Cyber Valley. It's the largest AI and robotics ecosystem in Europe. Matthias Peisner is a colleague from Fraunhofer IAO. For him, the human is in the center, so we will discuss uh, topics of human-centered robotics and AI. You probably also know Alex Ferl from University of Stuttgart and Marco Huber, my colleague for AI in production. Yes, when we are looking uh, into Stuttgart in 1886, Stuttgart started with the uh, first car, with Carl Benz, who invented the car. And of course, this was really a starting point for all the industry around Stuttgart, the automotive industry, and at the same time, of course, also the production technology. So today, we have cars like this uh, from Mercedes, but also the nice uh, sports car uh, from Porsche. And this environment was also our our seat, our sandbox, where from for IPA was uh, started. I have a short video Augmented for you. reality enabled. It shows. Welcome to IPA. Fraunhofer IPA. Innovation drivers since 1959. With a strong startup culture. Two new spin offs each year, more than most other research institutes. Drawing on more than 50 years' experience in robotics, we improve technology, develop IT solutions. Yes, so that's a, a short insight into IPA. There's even a longer uh, version of the video available online. Um, yes, IPA is large, but for the ARF, we will meet downtown actually. So our venue is the Liederhalle. So it's uh, close by um, the train station in Stuttgart. So from the atmosphere, it's more like in, in Denmark, the concert hus. Uh, so we have space 
for actually up to 2,000 uh, uh, participants, so we can even grow uh, with the EIF. And uh, of course, we have a big ecosystem in, in robotics, uh, plenty of colleagues from German, Germany, also members of e-robotics, Schung, Bosch, um, SIG, um, we have uh, Mercedes, um, so therefore, we are, will also go into site visits. Um, actually, just today, I also got the confirmation from Mercedes that they will give us a substantial sponsorship, which will allow us to have the gala dinner in the Mercedes-Benz Museum. So that will be also a tremendous uh, evening. We are really looking uh, forward uh, to that. And from the, the topics, um, Cyber Valley will take care about the public engagement part. So what does it mean, the robotic transformation for all the society? Um, Franziska and team, uh, you have prepared a survey to follow up on the scientific track. How do, what is the experience of this new format uh, this year? How will we implement it next year? We have the robotics AI with Cyber Valley. Of course, again, tech transfer, entrepreneurship, and on other site visits, for example, to Bosch, to Arena 2036. 36 is 150 years of the automotive, so that's the reason of 26. To Max Planck, uh, then also uh, to Porsche, or also to the factory 56, where the current S-Class is manufactured. Yes, so uh, it's probably time to bring AIF uh, to Germany. And um, so some of you already received a cup or uh, um, step by our, our booth. Uh, today we got another batch of, uh, and then we uh, received a parcel with new cups. Uh, so uh, as an insider tip, be fast if you want to have a, a cup. Um, when you want to grasp uh, your uh, phone with this QR code, you can make a save the date. It directly acts um, the 1st of April to 3rd of April into your calendar. Yes, and with this, uh, Welcome uh, to Stuttgart. We are looking forward to meeting you then next year in Germany. Thank you. So thank you, Werner, and uh, the rest of the, uh, the Stuttgart 2025 team there. We, we, uh, we look forward to, uh, to, to seeing you next year. Okay, so um, almost before we come to our grand finale photos where we invite everyone on stage who has been a, a presenter um, or a member of a jury or indeed and very importantly a winner or a finalist this evening before that um, it's my pleasure to reveal to you where we shall be in 2026 which may possibly be the worst kept secret in this room I don't know but before we do that I think we should really show some recognition for the people who've put on such a splendid ERF here in 2024 here in Rimini. And I think uh, Lorenzo Marconi and his team have done a really good job. I know we expect uh, a, certain, a certain quality of style. It's almost part of it's like a, a national characteristic. But there's been that in a plenty, but also great attention to detail as well. And I really appreciate that. So, so thank you um, to uh, Lorenzo and the wider team um, who have um, put this fantastic ERF on. So very briefly, ERF 2026. Get your coats and scarves, everyone. We're going to Stavanger in Norway. And now, quite simply, grand finale. Everyone who's been a finalist or a winner or a member of a jury or a presenter, please come on stage for our grand photo. Okay, so congratulations to everyone.